Okay. So uh, this number no. which is the uh -huh. teacher number of co prime num co prime numbers that is actually a well known function. This is actually known as the quotient function. Uh, and it was uh, yeah, it was like first given by Euler. So mm -hmm. this is usually referred, denoted by this phi of n, which is the number of co prime numbers. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, relatively well known. Uh, I, uh, yeah, so basically, I, I have like just learned about this. Uh, but yeah, I don't have like the proper proof of it. But I will take you to the to the steps, and we will see how we can figure out this phi of n for any. So first thing is, when our uh, n is a prime, can you see what this phi of n will be? Uh, two. Okay. N, n minus two. Uh, uh, so why um I'm leaving out one and n. Okay. Hmm. So we are basically looking at theta call x, where the G C D of x and n is equal to one. So if you oh. take x to be one, we will include less, less than n or uh, less than okay. So basically, if you take a prime number, uh, so if you take one, two, three, up till p, uh, all these numbers are co prime uh, because like, they don't have a common factor, but you will include one also because that follows under this definition that is, the GCD of that number with uh, the given number is one, so we will include one also. Oh, so, now, that means it is n minus 1. So, when you have this to be a prime, uh, so suppose you will just call p. So, then phi of any prime number is p minus 1. Right. So, this is the most simplest case. So, now, Suppose it is of the form p power k. So now what would be phi of p power k? n minus k. Uh, so you are saying it is going to be p power k minus k? Uh, yeah, n is p to the power of k. Hmm. Um, so p to the power of k minus k. Right. So uh, Gauri, how did you get the number? So uh, there will be p, p squared, p cube, p to the power of four, etc., up to p to the power of k, and those are the only ones which will have common factors with uh, p to the power of k. Right. So you are basically taking one to p, then there will be p squared, p cube, all these things up to p power k minus one and yeah. p power k. So you are choosing all of these. These will all be co prime. But then did you uh, notice you will have this also too? Right. So these will definitely have to be excluded. But then there are more things we have to exclude. And how will we know how many of them? Huh. So what will be, what what all kind of numbers will have any any common factor with P power K? So you only have one prime factor, what one prime number. And this number is just uh, like a power of prime. So what kind of numbers will have GCD greater than one. What all possible numbers can be the GCD? Say, this GCD can be of what, what type? The GCD can be uh, a power of P less than K. Okay, so you are saying it's going to be a power of P. Power of P, uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay, that is correct, but that is not the only kind of 
G series. There could be the G series could take other forms also. So let's take an example. So prime is the prime, no. Huh? Huh? P is the so, prime, no. Yeah. Let's take eighty one, which is three power four. So can you give me some examples for which this G series is not equal to one? So we already have three. We have p square, which is nine. Three q, right? Six. Ah, uh, correct. Oh, the number would be a multiple of p. Ah, uh, correct. So GCD can only be a power of ah uh, yes yes yeah. So the GCD over here can be three three square three q ah uh, three power four. You ignore anyway. So the GC is going to be a power of p, but which number gives you the GC? It could be anything. It could be a multiple of p. Yes. Two. Uh, now GC of eighty one is. So GC of any number with eighty one can either be one or it can be three or nine or twenty seven. Any number with eighty one? How? No, no. I am saying it can be one of hmm. these numbers. Hmm. So just give me any random number. Between one and eighty one. Five. Huh. So, so eighty one. Five and eighty one is one. Huh. Give me some other number. Twelve. Huh. So now Three. what is the G C? Uh huh. Um. Okay. Seventeen. One. Again. Huh. Yeah. So now can you give me a number so that the G C D will be twenty seven? G C D of some number with eighty one. Twenty seven. Huh? Twenty seven. Correct. Is there any other number also? Fifty four. Nine. No, no, no. Huh? Ah. How about nine? No. So what no. is the G C D of nine and eighty one? Nine. Correct. So I want another number. Uh, I think Gauri already got it. So so that the G C D is twenty seven. Another number apart from twenty seven. So the GCD of those two is twenty seven. Ah, uh, eighty one also, right? Right. Okay, eighty one is anyway there, right? Okay. Can you give me a number which will get the GCD to be nine? Other than nine. Hmm. Okay, it's any number between nine and the next multiple of three. Ah, uh, like give me an example. For example, oh no, that is also not possible. Okay, eighteen. How about eighteen? Eight zero or one eight. One eight one eight. Ah, so yes. What is the GCD of eighteen and eighty one? Is it nine? Ah, you can check. So eighteen will be two into three into three. Eighty one is uh, three into three into three into three. So it is Sorry. nine. Correct. So now can you give me another number so that the GCD is nine? That is six. Hmm. So how do you know? Uh, GCD is nine. So with the prime factorization, you get uh, hmm. three into three into two into two, so three three is nine. Okay. So is there any other number also which will give nine, or that is all? Forty five. Ah, okay. Fifty four. Okay. So how do you know the GCD of fifty four and eighty one is nine? So it's the same prime factorization I did. Ah, uh, we will try. So what will be the Factorization of fifty-four. Oh, it's twenty-seven. Sorry, not nine. Ah, okay. But anyway, so do you see a pattern for numbers which give nine as the GCD and which will give twenty-seven as the GCD? Hmm. Yeah. So basically, yeah. So now, now, uh, can you tell me what kind of numbers will give a GCD that is more than one for any prime power? So, what can the x possibly be? So, Gauri, I have got your expression. Uh, it is almost correct, but we have to make some small modification. I think. So that's so, all. All the multiples of that number. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Got it now. Right. So this is going to be some multiple of. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So what we have is suppose you are looking at some prime power. You have one, two, three. It goes all the way till p power k. Mm. 
all the numbers which are multiples of p we have to remove all these numbers which are multiples of p hmm so these are the multiples of p are the only numbers which will not be co prime to p power k okay so we basically have to remove all of these numbers fine so that's why we have to remove p power k minus all the numbers and also multiples of p ha so we have to remove all the multiples of p that's all okay ha huh. so with that multiple of p itself that p power k minus 1 also comes correct yes right hmm so we have to remove p 2p 3p and so on but if you remove all multiples of p it will also include the p square the p cube and everything so we will basically have we be having p power k minus 1 multiples of p that is from 1 to p power k there are p power k numbers hmm 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 Of which there are p power k minus one multiples of p in this set. So we are just removing those. So these will be uh, this will be the size of numbers which are co-prime to p. P power k. Okay. okay. So we have now gone looked at the. Easiest case that is if it's a prime power, it's going to be p power k minus p power k minus one. Yeah. Mm. Right. So I will just write this in a slightly different form so that like it becomes easy as easier for us to like use it for other cases. So I will just take p power k outside. Then what will be inside? Uh, one minus one by p. Correct. So. So I'll just keep it in this form. Uh, p power k is n, so effectively it's n into one minus one by p. I mean, I'm just like keeping it for uh, in this form for now. It will turn out to be useful later. Okay. So now we will look at the next difficult case. That is, we will see what happens when n is of the form p one p. So now what could pi of n be? n by p1 multiples of huh. p1 correct. and n by p2 multiples of p2 correct but there will be like one small uh, tweak we have to do there is one common multiple for both which is n itself uh which is n itself huh? not oh this is just even p2 okay okay right so now i have 1 2 3 all the way till n Which is yeah. basically equal to p one p two. Yeah. So now, what are all the numbers that I have to do? That is, which all numbers will not be co-prime? All the multiples of p one, all the multiples of p two. That's correct. Right. So there will be p one to p one like that many numbers. Right. And then there will be p two somewhere in between, two p two somewhere in between, and all those numbers. So we just have to. Remove. So mm -hmm. effectively, this is going to be from n. We have to remove. P one, which is the number of multiples of P two, or say, let me write it this way. We have to remove P two, so there will be P two multiples of P one. So I'll remove P two of these numbers, and I have to remove P one of these numbers. That is all this P two. Okay. okay. So can we say it is n minus p two minus p one? Ah, minus minus one for n itself. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, maybe we will take an example. So we will take n to be something like seventy seven, which is seven into eleven. Right. So, which are all the numbers you have to remove? Uh, yeah, instead of like listing out, listing down all the co-prime numbers because there will be many. Let's we'll just remove. Let's we'll just list out which numbers we have to remove. That is, G C of X and seventy seven is greater than one. So, what is? What are all the possible X's? It's seven and eleven only, no? Hmm. So yeah. So Shrika, just give me some number. So that the GCD of that and seventy seven is greater than one. Give me some random number. Ah, huh, that's what it should be seven and eleven. That's all right. Okay. Can there be some other number which will be 
having DC is greater than one. I'm not getting any other number. Uh, you can just like think what we did for the previous example. That is for P for N. Oh, multiples of seven. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Correct. So, yeah. So now can you list down all the numbers? Okay. Till 77. Hmm. Okay. And in that 11... But among, out of them, none of them is a multiple of 11 as well. So huh, that's OK. So you can just list the multiples of 7. Then. 14. So we will have, we'll start with 7. So 7, 14, then? 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63. Mm. 70 and 77 is also there. I mean, so okay. that is yeah. also going to give GCD greater than 1. So that is it. Now, what other numbers are there? Still? 22. Ah, so 11 is also there. So 22. Yeah. We have already written 77. Ah, right. So now, how many numbers are we removing? How many numbers, sir? So how many numbers? Do we have to remove from 1 to 77 so that we get we are left with all the co-prime numbers? So these are all the numbers which are not co-prime. So how many are there over here? Okay, so we have to do plus one because we would have removed um n once with p1, the multiples, and once with p2. So you do the plus one. Right. So over here, for example, you can see that this set has seven plus 11 minus one elements. Yeah. So the multiples of seven, there are 11 multiples of seven and there will be seven multiples, seven multiples of seven. Multiples. But 77 okay. will come twice. So I have to do seven plus 11 minus one. Hmm. So here, that is, these are the elements to remove. Got it. So it is, I have to remove P1 plus P2 minus 1. I have to remove these many elements. Mm. So this is going to be phi of n. But we will see if we can write it in a better way. That is, if I have P1, P2 minus P2 minus P1 plus 1. So now can I write it in some other neat way also? So we can factor out P1, P2. And write it as P1, P2 into 1 minus 1 by P1. 1 by P2. Uh, minus 1 by P2 mm -hmm. plus 1 by P1, P2. Oi. Uh, no, I didn't mean it as oh, minus. Okay. <laughs> minus 1 by P2, P1. Hey, P1 P2. So, sorry. I will write it like this. 1 minus P1, 1 minus P2 plus ah. 1 by P1, P2. Yeah. Yes. Ah. yes. But you can write this thing also, whatever is in the brackets, as product of this. So it will be 1 minus 1 by P1 mm -hmm. times 1 minus 1 by P2. Right. So this, so effectively what we have in this equation, 1 minus A minus B plus AB. Yeah. This is the same as 1 minus A into 1 minus B. Yeah. Uh, you could actually like do it the other way also. It will be the same as B minus 1 into A minus 1. The same thing doesn't matter, right? So what we will have here, phi of n would be equal to p1 p2 into one minus one by p1 into one minus one by p2. Just like we started with n to be p1 p2, so I can just write it like this, right? n into one minus p1 into one minus p2. So right. this. Is uh, phi of n when n is of form p of p. Right. Yeah. Ah, so uh, it's like uh, are both of you comfortable with this? So far, yes. Ah, okay, fine. So now I just want to give you the next complicated case when n is of the form p1, p2, p3. So now what do you think phi of n is going to be? So we go with the pattern and say it is uh, n into 1 minus 1 by p1 into 1 minus 1 by p2 into 1 minus 1 by p3. 
Huh? Yeah, I think we we'll, we can verify. Yeah. So we should go with P one, P two, then P two, P one, P three, then P two, P three. Ah, uh, correct. So P one, P two, P two, P three. All these these numbers will definitely have like GCD greater than one. But are there other numbers also which will have GCD greater than one? I mean, are there other kinds of numbers also? So she's talking about the counts. So n minus there she's talking. Oh, okay. correct. No. Mm hmm hmm. Ah, right, right. So now, what should, what do you think the count is going to be? So just so I think n minus p one p two minus p two p three minus p one p three. Okay, that's it. Ah. Uh, and plus two. Ah, uh, plus two. So see. What we have is we have from n we are removing some multiples. I mean we are removing some numbers which will be having some GCD. Okay, so this this is going to denote all multiples of p3. That is, there will be p1, p2 multiples of p3 which you are removing. This is going to remove multiples of p1, and this is going to remove multiples of P two, can you see that we are not counting properly in the sense that we are removing some multiples two times? So we'll take an example. So we will take uh, we'll take sixty, which is two into three into ten. Mm. It's just smaller number. So from our count, we are removing from sixty. We are removing, uh, say this. That is two into three. This is like basically all multiples of five. So we are removing the numbers like five, ten, fifteen, all the multiples, right? Then we are also removing uh, three into five, which is multiples of two. Which will also have ten. Four, six, like that, and you are also removing two into five, which yeah. means multiples of three. So it's numbers like three, six, nine, twelve, and so on. So can you see that you are removing ten, for example, here also once, and you are removing ten here also once. Yeah. So you'll be removing fifty here once, and again here once. Mm. So what happens is. You are basically removing removing a number which is of the form like two into three twice. Yeah. Because multiples of six, it's getting removed over here also by multiples of two, and it's also getting removed in multiple of ten. Yeah, I think uh, all of them would be counted twice. <laughs> once with um, once with one of the factors, once with the other factor. Uh, we are not considering. Okay. Could there be a P one squared P two? Oh, doesn't matter. There also the same thing. So yeah, we have this P one P two. Ah, uh, P one squared cannot come. Okay, yeah. But we will be removing certain things twice. So those things which we are removing twice, we have to add once. So two times of P one, P two, P three are. So you are saying so two times of P one plus P two plus P three. So P one P one P one P two plus P two P three plus P one P three is already yeah. counting something twice. Okay. Now the one which are which are repeatedly getting counted is two times of p one plus p two plus p three. I mean, getting counted twice. Like for for example, here uh, six multiples of six is getting counted. Ah, uh, correct. So multiples of six are getting counted twice. How many multiples of six will be here? Ten. Okay, and then coming to three cross five multiples of fifteen four times. So 
that is getting counted twice and multiples of 2 cross 5 is 10 which is 6 times so that is getting multiple counted twice so totally 20 numbers are getting counted twice which is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 into 2 Achha, n in should be case. 30 here no for this yeah. case at least it is p1 plus p2 plus p3 into 2 so oh, i don't know in the example, n is equal to 60 is equal to 2 into 3 into 5. 2 into 3 into 5 is 30. Not 60. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 30 minus all these. So, uh, yeah. How are you getting p1 so, plus p2 plus 3? Okay. Uh, Let's list down the numbers which are now getting removed twice. Six. Sorry. Okay, all multiples of six will go on listing better. Uh -huh. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, forty-two, forty-eight. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we are taking n to be thirty. I probably put n to be sixty. Yeah. N is uh, thirty. So uh, multiples of ten. So these numbers appear once in like this box and they also appear in this box, right? Right. So we have to add them, like we have removed twice, so we have to add them once to count properly. So it's not into two, it's just P1 plus P2 plus P3? Correct. Hmm, okay. I just just thinking for okay. So similarly, there will be multiples of uh, 10, which we are removing twice. So 10 will come over here as multiple of 5, and it will again come as multiple of 2. Yes. So 10, 20, and 30 will be coming twice. And it will be uh, counted. Similarly, multiple of this. So how many such multiples are there? There are P1, P2, P3. So it will be like this. But again, here, that is like one small change we have to do. So we yeah. have uh, removed 30, counted 30 uh, three times. Removed 30 three times. Sorry. So plus one. Uh, plus one in the count of uh, um, count of uh, co-prime not being. So here it will be minus. Sorry. So it's like, okay, so all multiples of 2 are getting removed, but all multiples of 6 will also get removed along with it. So we have to add those things. Yes. So now when we add those things, we will also add 30 back into that side. But we have to remove 30 also. So okay. this will turn out to be like this. Hmm. It is like, uh, n minus product of two times plus product of prime uh, taken one at a time minus one. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so this is like just an induced thing. That's just an intuitive way of saying. Like you just keep this expression. So. How can you factorize this expression? That is n minus p1, p2, p3. Uh, it would be better if I write it like this. p1, p2, p3 minus p1, p2, minus p2, p3, minus p1, p3, plus p1, plus p2, plus p3, minus p3. Yeah, it okay. works out. 1 minus b into 1 minus b into 1 minus c. Yeah. n into? Huh? Same form will put. Oh, what Gauri Mom said is true. Yeah. Huh. So it can be factorized like this P1 minus 1 into P2. Uh, no, actually, it's not this. Huh. So it would be N into 1 minus 1 by P1 into 1 minus 1 by P2 minus. Into one minus one by three. Right. 
So now you should be able to like guess what it would be if we are having it as K. Yeah, P one, P two, up till P K. The case when the power of each prime is just one. That is just one. Okay. Yeah. So we were looking at examples where there are two primes or three primes, but even if you take k primes, this formula is still going to be and n equal to one. Hmm. Right. So now we are looking at two primes, but they have powers. So we will take yeah. it. So say you have uh, p one square, p two square. So now suppose n is of this form, we have p. Then what are all the things that we should remove? Multiples of p, mu uh, multiples of p one, multiples of p two, and multiples of p one, uh, p one, p two will all also come under. Oh, okay. Multiples of p one, p two would have been counted twice, so we'll have to add that back. Huh. So. We should also account for multiples of p1 square and p2 square. No? Multiples of p1 square will already be multiples of p1, no? No, oh, correct. So p1 square will already be included over here. p2 square will also already be included over here. So yeah. we are just looking at multiples of p1, p2, and both of them together. So now, yeah. what should the numbers be? So how many multiples of p1 will be there? Uh, P1 into P2 squared. Ah. So these many multiples of P1 will be there. How many multiples of P2 will be there? Uh, P1 squared into P2. Ah. But we would have removed multiples of P1, P2 twice. So yes. what should be that? Um, that will be P1, P2. So now we have to factorize this expression. It turned out to be the same um, expression inside the bracket as when it was P1, P2. Very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So I would like, I mean, another way of writing the same expression is it will be this P1 square minus P1 into P2 square minus P2. So, yeah, I like usually remember the expression of this form, but you can see that it is simplifies to this again n into 1 minus 1 by p1, 1 minus uh, 1 by p. Wow, that's amazing. So, uh, generalized to uh, generalized to. Uh, P1 to the power of K1, P2 to the power of K1, it still comes out to be the same. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now it will turn out that no matter how many primes that you take, oh my um, God. this will come out to be like this. How, how matter what the power huh? and no matter what the power sir. Yes. So no matter what the powers are, are I'm kind of able to see in the way things are getting factored off. But uh, yeah, I, this is the algebra to prove for the general case is probably too much for me. Uh, okay, so that will actually depend on one important fact that is. What? Oh. If I have two numbers which are co prime, okay. The number of uh, the number of co prime numbers of this product is the same as number of co prime numbers to A and so basically, for example, suppose I take a number like 35, it is same as this.
So this condition is very important. Have we done anything to see this, to be able to see this? Uh, we have not done anything. We have not proved this, but we are making use of this fact. We are seeing okay. this pattern. Okay. So that is why. So pi of if you write pi of p1 power k1 as this, that is p1 power k1 minus one power k1 minus one. Ah, then you will see that this works. Yeah. So we have not proved it, but we have observed this pattern. It yes. is not, we didn't see it in this form, but yeah. So this is the important result to prove this, to prove this uh, statement. Okay.